I was never, I wasn't a rough child. Um, I just like the gentler, softer things. <laughs> too harsh. I knew I was different but I realised it was something to keep hidden from the rest of the world. And I suppose that I would have been about 14 then, brushing my hair and feeling the soft nice clothes and that sort of thing. I knew that wasn't normal or what I perceived to be normal then. Well, I didn't have any friends that were girls at that age. I've got a brother who's 18 months older than me I've always been known as uh, Penny Panagi. Well, my name was Peter before, um, before I changed my name. the truth out. My name is Ben Broughton. I'm um, an artist currently based in Hastings. Um, I've been exploring my own issues around um, transgender and transvestism since the age of nine. And then I suppose around in, in the early 90s, the whole London scene exploded with a lot of clubs devoted to LBGT issues. And um, so I met a lot of people who were out on the scene, including a couple of people who were transgender, male to female themselves. So when I pitched up in Hastings and I met Penny, I felt um, I, I took a great interest in what she was doing in her life. Can you tell me? Did you realise that um, there were issues with Peter? No. You didn't? No, not at all. Um, when did you first learn that Peter wanted to become Penny? Uh, when he told me. Right, okay. When he, yeah. How long ago was that? Um, well, last year, I think it was. OK. Well, you know, time goes so quickly. Yeah, he, he told me he'd been... Um, he was talking, he said he'd been cross-dressing, and I just listened. I just didn't know what to expect, but, um, you know, when he said he was going to do it, I thought, so, well, it's Penny's life, Penny's life. Well, how do you feel about it now? Uh, about it now? Well, um, I, I get a little bit anxious sometimes when I know people are nasty, you know, but I'm just hoping, well, I'm sure he's going to be all right, she's going to be all right, you know, and make a happy life. I met Penny originally um, when she was usheretting at the Electric Palace Cinema. What was your initial take on her, if you had one? I was just curious, actually. I was curious as to her background, but when you meet somebody who's playing a character in costume, you're not really sure if it's them or the character that you're meeting. Which did you think it was? I, don't, I guess I thought it was a little bit of both. I thought maybe the character was a way in for her to express something of how she is inside. I just think, having got to know Penny just over the last few months, that it's more about Penny becoming herself rather than becoming a different person. I think if you consider yourself physically not the gender that, you're, that you feel inside, then you do something about it, like with anything, like converting a house. I came to Hastings in 2008. I 
move to a lovely building here. It's been really good. A couple of months after I first moved in, I went to the uh, Hastings bonfire celebrations. A uh, father of a family took exception to me being in their vicinity and he just made it clear that he thought I was a weirdo and shouldn't be near his kids. So I moved away and I didn't watch the bonfire celebration that night. I came home. I was very upset at the time and it did sort of knock my confidence. Um, it was from an uh, early age, I had a uh, great interest in um, mechanical things, um, steam engines, and then as a teenager it was uh, motorbikes, and soon I was taking them apart and putting them back together again. Most of my later teenage life were taken out with motorcycles, and we got off whizzing around, deriding people with Honda CB90s, if I remember rightly. Penny comes across as more more pressured, more self-aware. A couple of years ago you came up and we ended up having a row and you drove off because of course what you're going through is a big change but you were so preoccupied with yourself yeah. and blinkered to what everybody, anybody around you was doing. I just thought this preening twat can't be my friend surely because you just didn't seem the same. What is it that attracts TVs to women's clothing? That's essentially an important my question. I, th I think it's, uh, it, 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 it's many different things. I mean, it's a, quote, fetishistic thing to a certain extent. It can be an erotic thing. It can be a, uh, an aesthetic thing. Um, I think it probably varies from person to person. It may be, again, about challenging stereotypes, that, that if a man feels he has a very male life wearing a suit and going to an office, you might want to come home and put a frock on to escape that notion of masculinity. Um, and having sort of been in and around the way out uh, in London and Ron Storms and places in the past, I mean, you get a whole variety which sort of stretches through from a little old man I once saw turning up with a pair of naughty little knickers under his raincoat through to sort of drag queens who, who sort of say things, oh, I've got too much sex for my gender and stuff. And you describe yourself as a straight woman? Yeah, oh, no, well, I am. I always have been. So I've no, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of, I know, I used to walk into pubs in Hastings and go, that used to be a bloke. And I've been called a geezer bird and all sorts of different things. But again, you know, I, I just am being the way that I want to be and why the hell shouldn't I? What do you think now about the transvestite phase? Deep down it was to gauge people's reactions to me and to see if I could get away with it, how I passed as a woman. But then as it went on, and I realised it was just an act and I didn't want people to think of me as an act. That's got it. I found people were more accepting than they are now in some ways. Should never get away with it. Now I find people associate with the idea of a man in drag being a fun thing, but when they realise it's a serious issue, it makes them think about their own attitudes to transgenderism. You can tell them out of um, practice parking. Uh, it's nothing to do with my new gender, though. Did you ever suspect that there might be issues with Peter? No, I don't think I, I don't think I ever did. Actually, I don't think I ever did. The only thing is, we did go to a tarts and tramps party. And I dressed as a jam tart, and Pete dressed as what appeared to be Barbara Streisand, and loved every minute of it. You could see her loving herself in the mirror, um, but was also quietly understated, as if one maybe practiced. So no, I never suspected until I came back from college and found who I then knew as Pete scampering across the um, landing wearing just my tights. You're off to hospital on Sunday, in two yes. days. In two days' time, I'll be travelling up to um, Charing Cross Hospital, where I shall be having my transgender reassignment operation. And how are you feeling about that? 
really excited about um, the fact that I'm having the operation. I'm starting to think about if things go wrong more than I'm thinking about when it all goes right and I'm uh, the person I want to be. It would be good to talk to somebody that's been through the whole process and leading a successful life. But I do know um, a lot of people put too much on the fact of just having the operation and they're the ones that have a hard time and possibly end up suicidal. But uh, Why do you think they end up suicidal? Because they put too much emphasis on the operation being the be-all and end-all. Once, once you have your genitals changed, you are immediately a woman. Um, and it's nothing to do with the external appearance. That is just something. The, the main thing is how you feel inside. And, and that's your, your gender is the person inside, really. She's following her heart by having this operation, because it's going to be all very experiential from here on in. Her body will feel different. There used to be, I'm talking about 15 years ago, there used to be a very high rate of suicides, suicide amongst post-op trans people. I think that's where Penny's true metal will out, because she'll get on and get on with her life. I've only had the ukulele about uh, two weeks now. I learned C, which is that one. And you're sure you're doing the right thing? Yes. I really want the operation, I really want to be totally female, into my mind. But I am very, very scared about the... Um, what's going to happen to my body. Penny tells me that she has to have three months off after this operation. I said, women that's had hysterectomies don't have to have that. And she said, well, I've got to start, I've got to use her new vagina by like, using like a dildo thing to go in it to keep it from, I don't know, healing up. <laughs> Can you imagine? Ah. <laughs> oh, listen to this. Oh, the tinkle of ladies' laughter, <laughs> like eyes <laughs> on a crystal glass. I, as much as I can and as much as I ever will do, I think I've just about I've got it clear in my mind. And I love Penny to pieces. But I miss Pete as well, which is the saddest thing. It's, um, I've thought about this a lot. And it's a bit like a bereavement in that way. That person has gone. And I know you're still the same person, but it doesn't feel it particularly to me. Mm. And I just sometimes would love Pete to come in and give me a hug and be the Pete that I've always known. But that person's gone, and I've got to come to terms with it because you're a happier person. It's a, a brutal operation. It's like a having your breasts removed for women with breast cancer. It's a brutal thing to do with sexuality. And that's, a f that's upsetting and worrying for everybody, anybody. So that's, that's why I'm concerned. is a medical instrument to ensure that the my, my newly formed vagina stays open through um, use, I suppose. Right, OK. So basically you're poking one of those in a fresh wound? Yes, one of those. Well, it's not so fresh now, but yes. But it was at the time? Yeah, at the time, yes. First time you used one of those? Yes, first time I used was um, 
two days after the operation. Do you know what size that is? Um, probably about eight inches. I freeze when I'm in camera, you know, I'm like... Are you going to embrace the patient then? Yes. Can we give her the fuck it up? And thank you so much for the other day. Oh, that's alright. Yeah. So you're doing alright? You're getting there? Um, yes, the inflammation's gone down, but I think, uh, well, I know a, a stitch gave way early on, and that sort of has given me a bit of jip, you mm. know, now I'm going sort of a bit, bit painful. Did you go back? No, no, they just told me um, stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> suck it up, suck it up like a man. <laughs> I really like Penny. I've known her for about five years. Uh, met her in, uh, I think first saw her in Electric Palace uh, about five years ago and then subsequently in bars around Hastings. So, yeah, I suppose time will tell with Penny if it is, is um, the right decision for her. I mean, it's a massive regret if it's not, but... Do you think she makes a convincing woman? I think she does. I mean, it wasn't necessarily clear she was a transvestite. I was probably convinced on more than one occasion. <laughs> Loved the black wig. Um, and the red lips. Were there any issues with telling members of the family? Um, the only one was, um, um, yes. Uh, my sisters were all right about it. And the only one was, um, his brother, Paul. Yeah. Uh, you all right? Well, this end, this end, not that end. Oh, it'll just top off down there. I've got to lift this end round. Oh, you've got it. I can't, can't. Well, do you want me to do it? Yeah. And that, that side of the family. But otherwise, everybody's been good. They said. But it happens so often now, you know. And yeah, everybody's been lovely. Uh, Paul doesn't take it very well. Mm -hmm. But um, hoping to come round to it, you know. Do you think it's just a question of time with Paul? Oh, uh, no, not really. <laughs> I, I hope it is only a question of time. I'm not bothered. All these, I'm not that bothered. Uh, I have to admit, I'm glad it's not me. Obviously, it's a family member, so it's a bit different. But, um, it, you know, it wasn't like a, a major, major surprise. I have to admit, it, it was amusing, because my mum got the name wrong to start with. She called Penny Betty, right? And so, and so I mean, and it all got really, like, farcical, didn't it? And my job, I mean, really, I've got some raving nuts as I work for. I mean, you wouldn't believe, I mean, yeah, I tolerate them, I can tolerate anything. I suppose it would get interesting if you reverted back to 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 bloke like being well, a bloke. I, I feel I am being a bit blokey because um, you've got you got to know, change. Taking up the motorbike racing again, and uh, well, you got to, yeah, you've I've got, got a workshop that does motorbike stuff. It's not as if I'm making flower arrangements or anything like that. Yeah, that's interesting. You're doing blokey things like that rather than doing girly things. Um, but then why can't a girl do things like that? Because they, because girls are, they they're not the same uh, mentality at all. I suppose I'm I'm happy in that Paul doesn't have a a grudge against me now, and it's just generally as he's always been, and it does bring it back um, the feeling of um, having the Mickey taken out of me, which did rather knock my confidence for a long part of my life and just realise that's the way Paul is. Hi, I'm Penny Panagi, and this is my workshop at the Britannia Enterprise Centre, Hastings, where I service, repair and restore motorcycles. I also run the NC30 Club. Please come in and have a look around. Then Andy, Prince of Wales, finished in seventh, Pete Mannering was eighth. exclusive TV. We're here live at Brands Hatch.
for the British Motorcycle Racing Club Championships 2012 and I'm here with one of the competitors, Penny Panagi, who is racing for the first time since her transgender operation one year ago and also her first race since 1987. So how does that feel for you? She hasn't kept up some sort of stereotype that you, are, you go from man to sexually attractive dolly bird. I think that um, that's not what the op is about. The op is about feeling comfortable in yourself, not about what other people think of you. Good old Purdy. Good old Purdy. My trans. I don't feel the need to personally, but I think anybody who takes their life by the horns and makes themselves the person they are, then it's a very bold thing to do. Mm. Very brave, isn't it? Mm, hugely brave. Not, I mean, there's, you know, there's the physical, the mental, the emotional the financial, it actually affects every single aspect of your life. Yeah. And no, there's, you have to do it, you know, obviously you get surgeons and things like that, but there's, at the end of the day it's down to you. And you have to take the rap if it all goes horribly wrong. Or not like you'd expected. What advice do you think Peter would give Penny? Do your best and think it through and do your best, that's probably what Peter would say. But he was a bit of a strange one. Peter was. Mm. In what way? He was quite happy going off in his own world and living his own little dreams. Very insular. But I, I still am. There's no, there's no Peter and Penny. It's just me. Um, and perhaps Penny has come through, or perhaps Penny's a better persona to. To carry this being around when you look back on it it makes you wonder if it was to be you know to be a girl which i think it is now you know yeah. are, you, are you happy to have a daughter oh yes yes it's it's been great yeah you're proud of her oh yes yeah yes i truly am for all she's been through and all she's done and how she carries on in life, yeah, yeah. So if you could sum Penny up in a few words. Yeah. What do you think those few words would be? I don't think you can sum Penny up in a few words. <laughs>